organizations and systems and all that sort of thing, we often, what I try and do is look outside of schools to see if there are any models out there that are kind of good. And the value of words and inspirational words is always healthy. Uh, a friend of mine shared with me, and these are all online, uh, but the Cessna Aircraft Company has a new series of full-page ads that they are re releasing, um, you know, interestingly. These are all PDF files, kind of interesting. I just want to share the language of this one. Leaders, by definition, are always the first ones out of any predicament. Perhaps it's because their vantage point is unobstructed by anyone in front of them. And they are not held back by those who can't keep up the pace. <laughs> they find opportunity where some can only see doom. When others are frozen with fear, they find strength. Through their organization, I'm sorry, though their organizations are often small, their resolve is immense. In simple terms, leaders lead, and as a result, I love this, they will chart the uncharted in today's challenging economy, slip the stream of negativity, and deliver to the front lines of business. This is an aircraft company. <laughs> At Cessna, we are proud to provide the full range of tools for true leaders. We salute these champions of business. After all, they are the ones who will blaze the path to prosperity. Pretty cool. They're very nicely done. There's some interesting language in there as you're working with folks. Uh, there are, I think, six different ones that you, that you stopped having to defend your decisions a long time ago. They're all based on leadership of an organization. Something that might be kind of interesting as an enterprise to develop sort of a position statement. That's the way I saw it. Maybe it'd be an exercise for your enterprise team to develop some sort of a, of a banter, a banter point or a, a slogan point that, that they rally around. So I'll pass these around. These are all again. It's um, Cessna, C-E-S-S-N-A, Cessna Rise, R-I-S-E, CessnaRise.com. It's at the bottom. You can download these and uh, take a peek at them if you, if you wish. Um, let's transition to the book. We, we gave you a copy of the book, most of you anyway. That was an interesting stuff. Um, um, the, the 12 Brain Mind Principles book that you, you saw yesterday a little bit, um, I was asked by the publisher to write a book on leadership. I had sent some sample things over and, and the, the senior editor said, uh, would you be interested in writing a book on leading a differentiated school? And I said, I'd be very interested in writing a book on leadership. But I did want to write about the differentiated school because what the book publisher was catching on was the word differentiated instruction and what I call the bandwagon of hype. Not that it's bad or wrong. I fully agree with you know, understanding the different needs and so forth of students and adapting your curriculum and instructional style to meet those needs. But the words differentiated instruction were a marketing tool for this particular publisher, as are many, so that they can sell books. That's their marketing plan. That's their job. Make money by selling books. What does it mean to be differentiated? To be differentiated means that recognizing that there are individual differences, learning styles, abilities, and so forth in every child, and adapting and creating a space where um, where every child can be successful, rather than saying, "Hey, y'all, we're all going to do it this way, and now we're all going to do it that way, and now we're all, and I don't really care that you have strengths or weaknesses. This is the way we're going to." sort of a, a drastic example, but differentiation means I'm sensitive to the differences that exist in everyone in my class. And there's nothing wrong with it. I'm okay. That, that's cool. But I didn't want to write a book leading the differentiated school and jump on that bandwagon and keep those people well enough that I don't do that sort of stuff. It's, uh, give, give me a fresh approach. Give me something different. So what we did is we took a look at uh, a couple of different things. When I was asked to write the book, I turned to a friend of mine, uh, Elsie Ritzman, uh, who is a brilliant consultant down in Macomb County. She's a former president of a school board, uh, deep background in literacy and the arts. I said, Elsie, and she also is a principal of high school. I said, Elsie, would you be interested in co-authoring a book? I'd love to. So then I said, all right, well, uh, this is Elsie here. And then I said, well, I need a, I need a forward written. And so I turned to a good friend of mine, Kathy Sullivan, and I said, Kath, I'd be interested in having you 
write a foreword for me. Elsie and I are working on a book. I've been asked to do this thing, blah, 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 blah. And she said, well, send me some guidelines. Send me your stuff. What are you guys writing about? So I sent it to her. And she said, um, I love this stuff. Uh, would you mind, uh, would you mention the third author? Absolutely. And the reason I said absolutely is because of who Kathy is. Uh, Kathy Sullivan is a three-time space shuttle astronaut. Uh, she was the first American woman to have walked in space. She's a legend in U.S. space flight history and a very, very dear friend um, who I've known now for nearly eight or nine years. We've collaborated on a couple of different projects and uh, she's just a tremendously bright woman, uh, probably one of the smartest minds I've ever been around in my life and probably one of the fastest minds I've ever been around in my life. Her ability to process information and articulate ideas I mean, you just, you have to kind of say, okay, stop, I need to go out and take a walk, give you a few minutes, what did we just talk about here, you know. So Kathy's just awesome. She uh, lives in Columbus, Ohio, um, and is currently now head of uh, a uh, science education um, department, I guess, at uh, the Ohio State University. Uh, so we are kind of a weird group, um, but we functioned pretty well together. Talk about an enterprise, uh, working with three very diverse personalities uh, around a shared love of a topic. All of us leaders in our own right having accomplished a number of pretty neat things. So uh, that was a, that's a little bit about us. I throw this slide back in very intentionally because some of what we talked about yesterday in terms of um, in terms of the brain research tied in directly to the leadership piece. So we leaned on a wide range of, of bodies of research, from the brain research stuff, to the leadership piece, to the organizational systems piece. Peter Senge and his systems theory, chaos theory, organizational systems theory, all that stuff is critically important. Those folks were all part of the background work uh, that, that we had to do to put this together. So 